Welcome to the Thai life. We are James and Michelle and our three furry friends, Jojo, Bob, and Clyde. We left the city to live a simpler life on a small rural property in the mountains of beautiful British Columbia. James has a background in building and design, and Michelle loves growing food, cooking, and animals. Follow along with us as we take on small and large projects on our journey to self-sustainable living. Welcome back to the channel, everybody. We are at the lake house today installing a custom cedar sauna. The lake house is a project that James is working on for a client. It's a 4,000 square foot lakefront property and if you have any questions drop us a comment and we can answer any questions that you might have about it. And while you're there don't forget to hit the subscribe button. Okay back to the project let's build a sauna. In order to do this project you're going to need a few tools. First and foremost your hammer tacker staples so these look like they're eight millimeters little package of staples to go with the hammer tacker. You're also going to need a measuring tape, framing square, which we have here, a drill with a four and eight inch hole saw, a table saw, and a chop saw, some brad nails for the brad nailer, and last but not least, a leveler. A level. And a level. The sauna package was purchased from a company called The Cedar Shop, which is a Canadian-based company. If you don't have a cedar shop in your area, ideally you'd want to search for a specialty shop that specializes in cedar. Uh, they'll be able to provide you with all the components that you'll need. So when you are looking to build a sauna, you've got to pre-plan a little bit, or if you're going to do it in an existing space, you're going to have to consider how you're going to get power to it, and if you're going to have a wet sauna or a dry sauna, so in this case, we've planned to put it in the basement, so we do have some things in place already. As you can see, we're at drywall stage in the house. So the sound is going to change once you come in here quite a bit significantly. I can already hear it. This sauna is eight feet by eight feet, and we're seven foot six high. So you don't necessarily want a very high space. Uh, you want to keep it so that you can contain as much heat as possible. This is built out of a combination of 2x4 and 2x6 walls, just depending on the structure. So this is a 2x6 wall with just regular bad insulation. This is an R24 in the 2x6 walls, and we've actually used the R24 in the 2x4 walls that we have as well. So, but when you're planning the space for a sauna, you want to first and foremost kind of determine how many people you want to fit in there. Uh, this one could probably fit 10 people quite easily. And the size of it's going to determine Obviously it's gonna affect your cost. So once you have determined how big you want it to be and uh, for how many people, you can then go ahead and figure out more of your cost for it. So this one, we're gonna have an electric dry heat heater, like an element from a, a stove almost. We can show you the actual heater, we have it here. So again, back to the overall size. Once you have your size figured, you can then size the heater accordingly. So we've picked a dry heater electrically powered with an element. Um, we've already got sensor wire in place for the temperature. And then that's actually routed out outside of the sauna where you control the heat. So all that wiring has now been taken care of already. And this is actually where we're gonna mount the heater. I've got some backing in place because it hangs up on the wall off the floor. It does get quite hot, you don't wanna touch it. But being that it's a dry heater, you don't put water on it. So once you've determined the size of the sauna, you're gonna pick your heater. And it, like I said, in this case, we're using a dry heat, uh, dry heat electric heater. And it's actually sized based on the cubic volume and space of the room. So we do have electrical in place, which is something you wanna pre-plan for for lighting. So we have lighting, just a single pot up here, which will be on a dimmer. And then we're gonna have a full Full width bench out across here that's going to go about 18 inches off the floor. We do have electrical in place uh, for for lighting which is going to just come across the bench and the floor so you can have it nice and dark in here and there's one more just behind Michelle and we'll have a second bench across on the top so you can actually get up and sit up a little higher where it's going to be hotter. So the next step we have is to put in thermal foil which if we come out here this is a reflective foil goes on over top of the insulation and it has reflective properties to keep the heat in. And then the tiny groove will go on, which we 
we have quite a bit of it. It's a clear coming root cedar. You want to smell? Mm. Ooh. <laughs> okay. So the reason for using cedar is it adds natural resistive properties to moisture. And it smells great actually too. It repels moisture and it will rot. You want to use clear and not anything with knots in it. The knots can dry out or move, uh, whereas clear is more stable. Is there a certain thickness of that tongue yeah, and groove? Yeah, this is a three quarter inch, just under three quarter inch tongue and groove. So it's milled. And this will be for the walls and the ceiling and I've got two by four and one by four for the benches. We got a whole stack of uh, longer pieces out front. And then I also ordered a custom door. It's actually not custom, it's a standard door. So then the heater that we have is a nine kilowatt uh, home craft dry, dry heater. Uh, this is something I recommend you get professionally wired in. It does require a lot of power, a relay switch, and then also there's thermostat control and a couple other things on it. Unless you're capable of electrical work, it's best to get Sparkies to do it for you. You should always have a knife, no matter what you're doing. Mm -hmm. right. So I think what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to measure this out into smaller sections and just make it a little bit easier. To put up, so I'm gonna do that out here. Do you want my help? Pretty thick. Mm -hmm. It's like pretty burly stuff. Mm -hmm. This is to reflect the heat, so the key, the heat in to the room. It's also a vapor barrier, so it keeps moisture from getting out. Right. Okay. So even though it's a dry sauna, let me just get this off my head. It's probably easier to explain. <laughs> I kind of like it. <laughs> One of the reasons I did that long edge first is because it's kind of like wrapping a present. Gives you a little bit better. You don't want to have this full of wrinkles, is kind of what I'm trying to say. That's a wrinkle bit. And then you also want to have a positive flap. So when I do the wall paper, it's going to come under this. So this will go, yeah. And then any moisture that does build up, comes down and stays and hits the concrete floor. Mm -hmm. It doesn't soak into the wall. Correct mundo. And the title of this is too, because when you're putting on the tongue and groove, you don't want to have to be dealing with wrinkles and stuff that can make the tongue and groove sit unevenly. So the smoother this sits, the better that stuff's going to go. Okay, so we got the one up. Now we're going to work our way back because this stuff's four feet, but we also want to have a lap across just to help get a seal and then with that you can avoid taping it so i'll have about an eight inch overlap six inches is a plenty 
Nice tinfoil hat. <laughs> So you might have noticed that I pre-cut the uh, foil vapor barrier for the ceiling. Much easier to manage than trying to hold the whole roll, especially if you're doing it by yourself. Less to deal with, and then you can also, you can align the edges with the edge of the walls. Much easier. When we do the walls, I'll just keep the roll. It's a little bit easier when you're doing it vertically. But ceiling, no bueno. I mean, we could tape it. What about those saggy bits, babe? That's just the inflation. Pushing down and it'll push up. So when we put the tongue and groove on, it'll, put, it'll all push up. And uh, tongue and groove also help hold. We'll push it up a little bit now. But the tongue and groove will help hold everything up in place. Onto the walls. Okay, so we got the ceiling done and now we're going to do the walls and we can actually leave it on the roll for that. And there's just one kind of important thing I want to go over with that. So get it tacked. It's really important that you're tight in your corners. So you can get, get it rolled over, punched up. You know, just make sure it's not bunched up too much on the bottom. Roll it out and let it hold itself here. But the one important thing that I want to make sure, which will save you problems on the next step, is to make sure that your corners are really tight. when you're putting your tongue and groove in there you don't want it to be getting in the way it didn't spoil getting in the way It is like wrapping a present. Done. That part's done. And the vapor barrier reflective wrap installed. We're gonna start on the tongue and groove. And a bit of a tip and trick for the tongue and groove is what we want to do is measure our total distance and then divide it by the coverage of each piece of tongue and groove. So when we start, we, or pardon me, when we finish, we don't end up with a small sliver of a board. So we just want to take a bit of time to measure and calculate to make sure we're not going to end up with a small piece of tongue and groove at the end. Because we're going to start over on this end, work our way across, our distance across on the bottom. We're at 87 and three quarters. Or the same at the top. So here's our tongue and groove. The actual coverage that you're going to get is going to be from this edge to where the tongue starts. So we've got to measure that distance. And we're sitting at three inches of coverage. Okay, so we have 87 and three quarters. So we're going to take 87.75, which is three quarters. And we're going to divide that by three. So we're going to have 29 and a quarter pieces. So 29 full pieces and a quarter over another piece. So now we're going to take 3 times 0.25, which is going to give us a quarter of 3, which is 3 quarters of an inch. So that's a little bit small. So what we can do is we can take one of these pieces and rip it in half. So we'll end up with an inch and a half coverage, which is going to bump us over. Uh, it'll double us up. So we won't end up with a small sliver. Make sense?
We'll see when we get there. So we are exactly eight feet across and we have to keep in mind, so we're gonna do the ceiling first. Once we put these boards on, it's gonna help cover up the edge of however our ceiling meets. So we do have a bit of play here. I'm gonna cut my pieces one eighth under eight feet, which is gonna give me a little bit of play so I'm not gonna fight against any of the insulation or the foil wrap when I'm putting up the pieces. We're gonna rip the first one down to an inch and a half on the saw, but you might as well cut your length before you do rips so you're not ripping as long. Safety first. These earplugs are really good. <laughs> are they? Yeah, I can't hear anything. Okay, so now we're gonna put our first guy up. We wanna make sure we're tight against the wall, so we're gonna be hitting every stud here. I notice you're doing the middle one, working from the middle out. Yeah, just because the length of the piece. So I'll work my way along. And on the first piece, we can nail against into the face because that's going to be covered by the tongue and groove on the wall. You won't see it. And then the other nails are going in, in through where the tongue goes. So my ceiling is two foot on center for the ceiling. Uh, the supports in the ceiling, but the walls are 16, so I'm gonna have some offsets here for a little bit. All right, so then we'll grab the next piece, which I just cut. Are you tongue and grooving it? Tongue and grooving it. So this one you're gonna to want to start on one end and then work your way along to get it in. Mm. There we go. Oh, you don't even have to nail it. Well, you, yeah, you don't nail this edge here. You nail into the, no, you just nail into the tongue, into the ceiling. Mm. And then you can't see any of the fasteners. Mm -hmm. Part of the beauty of it. You want to make sure that you're... You can see that's holding up the insulation that was put, pushing down. There we go. On to the next, so a lot of repetition for this. <laughs> Beautiful cedar. I guess another thing to mention too is you want to apply firm pressure because the nails aren't going to push it into place. They're going to just hold it where you set it, especially with the smaller nail. Okay, so we have all the tongue and groove installed up to the pot light in the ceiling. You can kind of see the door there. And I just want to go over a way to mark this out and cut this so that you don't waste any material. So we're going to grab a, just a small square and scribe it onto the last piece in place and get a measurement to the center and then also over to where we're going to start the cut with the circle of this. So we're gonna take a framing square and we are just going to mark that center point just to get the center side to side. And then we're gonna take a couple measurements. So off our last piece, so I'm 50 and three quarters off that end to the center. 
And then off of the tongue, the recessed portion of the tongue to the start is gonna be an inch and a quarter. So I'm gonna go a hair less, an inch and three sixteenths. Okay, so now I've got the two, two pieces of uh, tongue and groove that we're gonna mark out to, to cut out for the light in the ceiling. We're gonna measure over our 50 and three quarters. And then from this edge, we were an inch and three sixteenths. You want to use pencil so it doesn't bleed through into the into the wood. If you use an ink, you're going to bleed through into the wood and you just won't get it out. So the other thing we're going to do is, before I make my next mark, is we're going to line these two pieces up nice and tight. And we're also going to flush out the ends because this is the end I measured from for the 50 and three quarters. Put that nice and flush. And then we're gonna come over straight across from that. We're gonna to come to the center of our hole. So our hole is a, our, our hole saw is a four and one eighth. So we're gonna come over two and a sixteenth from there. I'm gonna give myself a bit of a mark in the middle. All right, so from our edge of the, we're gonna come over one, two and a sixteenth which is going to be right on the edge of the groove. So because that's there, it's going to make it a little bit trickier to drill this. So we'll do a pilot hole. And then we're going to use our hole saw just to scrab it. So this is a four and an eighth hole saw. I'm not actually going to drill right through with this. I'm just going to get the the drill guide through, and then I'm gonna scribe out and cut the rest with the jigsaw. I wanna go really slow with this. There's no need to. There you go, so we got a bite. So we're gonna leave that in place. I'm just gonna scribe pencil. It, and then we're going to cut the rest with the jigsaw. This is going to give us a nice snug fit to the rough in box that we've got in place for the uh, pot light in the center. We can screw this guy in. There we go. So nice and tight around it. You got no gaps. And then we all have the cover, which is magnetic. Pops on. So now it's just smooth sailing for the rest of the ceiling up into the corner. And then once we get there, we can show you the reason for the calculation on the starter strip against the wall over here. All right, so now we have the whole ceiling done. And just to go back over the reason for calculating the coverage of the tongue and groove on the ceiling. So you can see here we have a full, full piece, but we started with an inch and a half piece. And what that did is as we work our way across the ceiling, it gave us an equal piece on this edge of this wall. So we, if we didn't do the offset calculation, we would have ended up with a very small three quarter inch piece here which would be very difficult to get into place without breaking it. And this gives us also close to equal reveal once we install the wall tongue and groove.
All right, so this is as far as we're going to get in this video. So we just have the ceiling finished. And the next video, we're going to do all the wall cladding, the benches, and install the heater itself. Yep. Also the floor panels. That one might be a few weeks away because we're going to have to wait for our electricians to come back. Hopefully this at least gets you started on your sauna project. Yeah. And again, if you have any questions or comments, please drop them in the comment section. Uh, don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching episode one of the Cedar Sauna install. Episode two coming soon.